um, assume sigma and um, the ones you actually measure. Um, so remember that, that J is, is something we now know how to calculate. And so actually um, what, what uh, the elements of J look like, um, J is a matrix of um, partial D3. Let's move this chair. Um, well, maybe I should have um, something like this. So, although V is written as a vector, it's you, you drive the ith current and then measure the, the voltage on the jth electrode, uh, and you just organise into a vector, and then we differentiate with respect to the this coefficient sk in the expansion of sigma. And, and the way that you calculate this would be um, that you'd integrate, well, this would be, in this case, um, the field you get if you if you drove the, the current pattern that you actually drove, and this would be, um, perhaps I should call that V, just to make it possibly different, that this would be um, the potential you get if you drove the measuring electrodes. So if you're measuring here, you pretend you drive them, work out the field that you get, and that's how you get the sensitivity. Now, if this phi i was just one on some subdomain, like, like a tetrahedron, and zero elsewhere, we just have to work out the integral of this over that element. But if it's some smooth basis function, we'd have to do a bit more work. So this is something that's fairly easy to calculate, and then we have this linear problem to solve. And, and the, in principle, the idea is that we solve it, we update sigma, and now we've got a new best guess for sigma, and then we can solve the forward problem predict, to predict the voltages we would get, and then compare them with the measurements and update the conductivity again. So essentially this is Newton's method. Right? We repeatedly solve the linear problem, update it until our voltages fit the measured voltages. So that's the general scheme of things. But in, in particular we're going to solve this linear system. And it turns out that, well first of all this matrix, no reason to particularly assume it's square. Um, it's uh, this this matrix is sort of this vector is number of electrodes squared roughly. I mean, there's some redundancy, sort of roughly half there. But um, this is just however many adjustable conductivities we put in our model, which we can choose. Um, so of course, the, the strange thing about linear algebra is is that we teach linear algebra to engineers, and. And we teach on a completely mythical and useless version of linear algebra where you always solve n equations for n variables. Nobody ever does that, right? Because, you know, if you're trying to infer one physical quantity, you wouldn't just take one measurement. You'd take lots of measurements and average over them. The equivalent when you're trying to infer some physical quantities from a lot of measurements that are linear combinations of them is you take more measurements than you have unknowns, obviously, and in which case, you would typically have an inconsistent system, but you try and fit it the best you can, say in the least square sense, and um, the fact that it doesn't fit tells you that the data's inconsistent because of errors in the measurement. So that's actually normal life, to so have over-determined systems. And, and a very simple example, um, with, with, with three straight lines not meeting, is if you, if you want to find the position of a ship by taking bearings on, on three known places that are on, on your chart, lighthouses or whatever, well, in principle you only need two bearings, and where they cross is where you are, but the third one never quite agrees. And so, in, in principle, what you want to do is just solve the least square solution. But the size of the triangle that you get, the fact that they don't meet, tells you how bad you are at taking bearings on a, on a ship that's 
wobbling to and fro with the waves and so on. Um, and it gives you an estimate of, of uh, how reliable your position is. And, and that's actually the normal situation for measurement and solving linear system. So, so we have to go back and do some linear algebra of overdetermined systems. And, and even then, there's another problem, that this problem is, is ill-posed. And that means the linearized system will be ill-conditioned. And so there's two problems that we have to solve there. And so now we're going just back to linear algebra. And in linear algebra, it's traditional to solve ax equals b. And I'll, I'll do it in the real case. Um, in principle, eit could be complex. But um, x is a vector in Rn. Um, b is a vector in Rm. And so A is, um, let me write it like this, rows by columns. Have I done this the right way around? Mm. This one, Tim, and then? No, no, no. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, we, we're interested in the case of. Um, n being bigger than or equal to n. Maybe even strictly bigger because we want to be overdetermined. Right? More equations than variables. And I would like to draw a picture. And it's sort of, it, here's the picture that I have in mind. That's a, that's x, and that's b. And so that's n by n m rows and n columns, and the point is it's, it's tall and thin. Okay, so um, what, what we want is the least square solution, x least squares, and that's, this, let me just write it and I'll tell you what it means. Okay, so that, that's just the length of the vector, the, the ordinary 2 naught length. Um, and arg min means minimise ax minus b and return the x that does that. Well, of course, assuming that it's unique, right, so, so we have to address the problem of whether, whether the solution is unique. But um, this means the x that minimises this expression. So what we're doing is we're trying to fit the data, and of course, if there was a an exact solution, this would be zero, but usually they'd be inconsistent. The best we can do is fit it in the least square sense, minimising the square of the error. Okay. Now, um, there's a very easy formula for this, but let me just... Um, I won't calculate it, but I'll tell you why it's easy to calculate. This is a quadratic in x. So you can write it all out. It's, it's, it's got x squared turns in. And so if we want to minimise it, we'll differentiate and set that to zero. And if you differentiate the quadratic, you get something that's linear. Right? So it's no surprise that solving this for the derivative equals zero is a linear problem. And the linear problem that we have to solve is actually the normal equations a transpose a x is equal to a transpose b. So those are the normal equations which are consistent, uh, uh, actually the condi conditions for a critical point of this, all right? And, and of course, um, this is, is positive, so if it has only one critical point, that has to be a minimum. Uh, so you don't have to look at the second derivative to see that. And um, so in the case that this is invertible, In other words, if this is invertible, then there's a unique solution, then that must be the unique minimum. So we're really only concerned with whether this A transpose A is invertible. But here's the thing, A is long and thin, um, A transpose looks like that, A looks like that. So A is actually a small matrix, that's A transpose. A transpose A is the smaller of the two things you could do with multiplying A by itself. And so, as long as A has full rank, in other words, 
Okay, so it's got lots of equations here. I mean, so it, it um, you know, it's got plenty of things, but but of course, if um, lots of if too many of them were dependent on the other equations, you might still not have enough equation. You could write out the same equation in, um, m times, and that would be rank one. You know, so um, assuming that a has full rank, um, if um, so, let's say m rank of A is equal to N, which is the biggest it can be, of course, than the A inverse. In which case, this is the minimum, and, and this is actually the X least squared to minimize. Okay, so you can do that calculation yourself. It's not that hard. Um, so, in our case, that's the Jacobian matrix J. That's going to be the vector of unknown conductivity, so it's going to be right-hand side. And... What happens here, if we do this for EIT, um, uh, unless we use maybe a very, very small number of unknown conductivities, is that when we try and invert this matrix, it all goes horribly wrong, because the condition number of this matrix is too big. So even though it has got full rank, um, there are some arbitrarily large vectors that produce arbitrarily small right-hand sides when you put them in. In other words, there are some changes in conductivity that uh, are practically invisible in terms of voltages in the boundary. And so those components are very hard to find, and any small errors in those in the voltages produce enormous errors in the conductivity. That's what it means to be ill-conditioned. Um, so, so we kind of have to abandon this least squares and replace it with something else, and that's where regularization comes in. Um, and the simplest form of regularization, taken off regularization, is a small modification of this. Which says, well, we want to fit the data.